we're gonna move some stuff around here. I got I got some load of twine coming. We're gonna have to unload. Move my truck out of the way. Put my squeeze up in here so I can work on it if I need to or whatever. And then because it's on the skid steer right now. And then we're gonna put the forks on so we'll be ready when the truck shows up. Because he won't be able to get into my drive. So I'm gonna be out there at the road waiting on him. Push it. Got a little bit to learn there. That's all right though. Gotta start somewhere, right? Anybody else packs up in their barn like a sardine when there's a storm coming? Going for a long ride. Very long trip from there to here. All right, Cade. That's it. Time to get the skid steer. it on simply push this side down push this side down and I'm gonna narrow these forks up just a little bit give it a little kick here oh pass it all right now we're ready actually probably about perfect time because the guy's just not opening up his door so Go. All right, we got her dead. What do you think about that, Cade? 36 rolls of twine. And Sissy's over here flying her kite. I see that. What do you think, Pickle? We got us a kite way up there. You see it? Yeah? What do you think about our, our twine stash, Cade? Huh? Nice, beautiful, sunny day outside. We're getting ready to blow in a storm. Uh, ran some last night. It is 82 degrees outside right now. Stuff is growing. And, uh,. We got some twine for this year. Different twine than I normally run. I'm gonna just go over that real quick with you here. Um, I don't have a specific brand that I necessarily run. I run Bryden, I've run the New Holland stuff, um, the stuff from uh, Buckeyes. Uh, I really haven't had a whole lot of issues with it. I did some research and I found basically equivalent twine, just in a larger package, multiple different colors. I've been trying to get some different colors for some reason. Maybe it has to do with the COVID stuff. A little bit short on the resin that they make the twine out of is what I've heard, but color selection is pretty limited. Um, I'd like to have more, several different colors. Uh, I was able to get two different colors and then we can obviously get our, our normal red or orange, whatever color you want to call that. Here's the typical twine that I buy, have been buying all along. Um, if you look here, it is 170 knot strength and 9,600 feet. What those numbers mean, a lot of times you'll see it 170-9600 and 170-9600. What that is, is 9,600 feet is how many total feet is in the package. And then that number is the amount of uh, force a knot tied with this size twine is supposed to hold. Now, that is what I've been buying. Now, a lot of what is offered is uh, I think it's 130 knot strength, and I think it's 139,000. So like if you buy a 9,000 foot roll, typically it's 130, and you'll have some issues with that. Okay, um, a lot of places don't actually have this 9600 170. Um, so just to throw that out there, if you're using a 9,000 foot roll. Uh, especially if you see somewhere on there where it says 130 knot strength, pound knot strength. Um, not saying you will have issues, but you're more likely to have issues with tying and not staying tied and, and everything. Uh, so the 9600, the, the 170 I found to be really good. 
Uh, you can use 210, 170 or 210 are both fine. You don't really need to go any bigger than 210. And uh, a lot of times it depends on what you're bailing too, you know. If you're bailing 50 pound bales like me, 170 is plenty. You can always go 210, but if you're getting more expensive. If you're bailing 80 pound bales, you know, really dense bales, you might want to go ahead and go with 210 just to be on the safe side. That brings us to the new twine that I bought. Now, this is equivalent twine. It's 170 knot strength, however, it's 7,200 feet. Now, um, the typical roll of twine that you find at like a rule king or something like that is usually 7,200 feet, 170. That would be equivalent to this twine here, okay? So that would be 7,200 feet between these two rolls and that is typically the one set 170 pound knot strength. So that's why I've always gone with the 9600 because there's more footage in there, fewer changeovers, all that good stuff. So you'll say, well, why in the world did you go back to 7200? Well, if you pay attention, these are individually labeled, okay? This is labeled as a package. Now, obviously you can't bail hay with a single roll. However, this is actually saying there's it's 170 pound knot strength and 7,200 feet in that roll, and there's 7,200 feet, 7, feet in this roll. So that means in this package here, out of these two rolls, compared to these two rolls, I have 150% of the footage in this package as I do in this package. So there's 4,800 feet in each one of these rolls here. 4,800 times two is 9,600. There's 7,200 feet in each one of these rolls, which means there's 2,400 feet extra in each of these. So for every package of this, for every two of these you use, you, it'd take three of these to make those two. So what that means is I can bail, you can look at it from two aspects. If you're bailing as much hay as you could possibly bail, you can bail 50% more, so 150% of the hay that you could bail before you had to stop and restring. My baler will hold two, four, six. All right, so my baler holds six rolls or three bundles, three packages, three pairs, whatever you want to call it. So essentially you could bale 50% more hay on that capacity. Also, what I'm more interested in is it's 50% fewer changeovers. Uh, that's typically where I miss a bale. If I do miss a bale, it doesn't miss it all the time, um, but you'll, you'll miss more bales on a changeover. Uh, so, Eliminate that chance. Uh, you know, I can typically on this 9600, I get somewhere around 600 bales on a package there, so I should be able to get 900 bales in this 7200 here. So, uh, 900 bales on one pair of of rolls of twine is is pretty pretty good. That's a significant increase. So you take that 900 times three, that's 27. I could bale 2700 bales with my baler before I ever have to. Uh, add twine to it. I couldn't bail that much in a day if I wanted to because our windows are how they are. So that's not really a huge deal to me, uh, but I do like fewer changeovers. That's what I'm oh, after. You'll see. I got two different colors. For me, I'm colorblind. They're pretty close, but I can tell the difference. This is purple. This is blue. Hopefully. Then, of course, we have our regular red or orange color that you can get basically from anywhere around here. Uh, not in this size, but if I did need another color, I could go to that. I'm gonna tell the difference between cuttings and types of hay if I've got something that's close, you know, an alfalfa orchard grass mix versus an orchard grass mix. Uh, you can tell the difference, but it just make it easier if I have somebody come and pick it up and I'm not there or whatever. So that's my goal. Anyways, we're gonna unpack this and get it put up in the corner up here. So I'm just gonna put my twine for now. So. What are you doing, Pickle? Feed some of the deer. All right, guys, if you stay tuned to this point and you're in for a treat, maybe if you're interested in this kind of thing, I've got so far what I've got done on the squeeze. It is not finished, it's very close to be finished. Uh, the frame is mostly finished. I got hydraulic stuff to do and, and some bracing to do, but other than that, some, some touch up work to do. Other than that, it's, it's really, really close. So let's check it out. All right, here is the squeeze. It is 
skid steer quick attach. The arms, I'm calling these the arms. I'm calling the piece that slides in and out that the arms attach to the slide frame. This is the main frame, okay? The arms are six feet long. The minimum closing width outside the outside. So from this point to the same point on the other side is 58 inches, just a little over 58 inches. So if you take two inches off here and two inches off there, that's where it'll first make contact with the hay. Of course, this is channel, so it will kind of dig into the hay a little bit. Um, also, the tip spacing is narrower than the base to allow spring tension of the strain of this as it bends outward as you put more force on it to actually squeeze these this outer row of bales. And then I've got 16 inch stroke cylinders, gives you 32 inches of travel, 16 inches on either side. So if you add that to that 58 inches, you get 90 inches. One thing I'm gonna add that's not on here is I'm gonna put some grease zerks. I'm gonna put two here, two here, two here, and two here. There will be a, a, a better video coming out where I show exactly what I've done. In that video, you'll, I'm gonna show some footage of us testing it. This has not been tested. I've not even operated this with the arms on there. I've done some testing on the slides. Just make sure everything goes smooth and true and everything the slides work well um, of course I don't know how they'll do with a the load on them there really isn't a squeeze in the market for what I'm wanting to do there are some squeezes for small bales they're for handling bundles so they're not not near as long the arms aren't near as long as this one is I'm handling stacks from a stacker wagon so what I'm gonna be handling is five bales across on edge two deep so it's gonna be one row five bales across on edge and another row five bales across on edge my goal, this is my goal, we'll see. I'm gonna be posting this long before I even test it, so. Fingers crossed, hopefully I don't make an idiot of myself. My goal is to be able to pick up three or four layers. Um, my ultimate goal is to be able to pick up four layers. If I could pick up even more than that, I would, but I don't know if I have enough skid steer for that as far out as it's gonna stick. So, in saying that, Ultimate success would be four, four, four layers. That's gonna be 40 bales. There's 10 bales in a layer. All right, guys, there's one more check I wanna do on this thing. Neighbor passing by. I've got it raised up as high as the skid steer will reach and leveled out, I think, as good as I can tell from here. Probably tilt it up just a little bit, but we're gonna measure how high that thing is from the ground. And I'll be able to tell exactly how many layers high I'd be able to stack if I succeed in grabbing however many layers. So we're going to measure from the top of that channel down to the ground. All right, guys, I've not looked at the tape, and I'm not even down all the way to the ground. It's the first time I'm hooking it up. So I was pretty darn close to what I thought. I thought I could raise it 10 foot, and to the top of the channel, it's 10 foot 3 inches. Right my thumb. I'm trying to keep it tight because the wind's blowing. I'm just going to pull the tape measure down. Anyways, there's 10 foot 3 inches. We got it hooked to the top of the channel. So since that's to the top of the channel, we need to take six inches off that. So actually, that's nine and a half feet. Just say nine and a half feet to the bottom of that channel to the ground. Actually, it's more than that. Nine, nine, nine foot nine inches. But what I what I'm gonna figure just say nine feet. Okay, let's, let's figure nine feet. That'll give me some leeway there to, to be able to lift it higher than that. With that being said, <laughs> 18 inches, which is how wide a bale is. Stack it on edge, that's how tall it is. 18 inches times six rows is 108 inches. That's nine feet. So I can stack six layers high and still be able to set this thing on top of it. So that means, theoretically, if everything works, I can stack six. And then if I can grab three, that means I can go three more on top of that. That means I can stack nine high. If I can get four, that means I can go 10 high. That's higher. If this was a grapple, I'd be able to stack six high and that'd be it. That's part of the reason why I want to do a, uh, a, a squeeze instead of a grapple. So what that means is for the standard skid steer, now this is not a little bitty skid steer. It's not a, the biggest one they make by any means either. It's respectable. 
but with a standard squid 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 okay i'll get it out this time with a standard skid steer that means i can stack 15 feet high if i can grab four layers if i can grab five i can stack even higher than that but I'm, I'm i'm going off the assumption that i'm completely successful which i know is a long shot and i can grab four if i put four on top of six that makes ten simple math class here ten times 18 is 180 inches divided by 12 is 15 feet yes i know i did all that in my head right here on the spot uh not everybody can be like me really appreciate you guys watching excited to try out our new twine i'm excited to try out the the squeeze We've got something going on we've got the applicator kit going on the square baler i'm excited for that it's 82 degrees outside. We're getting ready to get some thunderstorms and some rain. It's, the sun has been shining. I'm excited for that. Not necessarily the thunderstorms, but the rain and the warm weather and making things grow. A lot of exciting things going on. We're really close to cutting hay. Honestly, if I had the weather, uh, I've got some hay that could be cut right now. But we don't have the weather. So and it's actually a, a blessing in disguise for me because I am not ready. I know, I know. I know. I'm famous. I've got a YouTube channel. I'm supposed to be really, 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 really on the ball. And I should already have all that stuff done from this long winter. And I don't. And no, I'm not famous. I don't. Like I said, a lot of exciting things going on for our small operation. I know I'm not getting a bunch of new equipment and, and fancy, shiny stuff. Everything I have is wrinkly. When I get it, it's wrinkly. When I get rid of it, it's wrinkly. Anything I have is wrinkly. Old used maybe not necessarily wore out usually wore out when i get it but anyways i digress as i was saying thanks for watching guys god bless you god bless america brings a penny forge out